Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Brooksburg Zoo. We are going to build once again in our living desert area with the animals that you guys voted for. Last week we built the extension for our sand cat habitat and finished our desert house and built a brand new habitat for the fennec fox. So the next animal on our timeline is going to be the black rhino for which we are going to build in today's episode. But before we are going into that we are going to have a look as usual at what we did in the last episode. So we are going to look at the extension for our scent cats and the fennec fox habitat. Yeah, and I really do like this new movie camera mode. This is so, so, so incredible. It is so cool to do videos with this. So here we are in our living desert area. Right on the left uh, were the Somali wild ass. Here on the right and on the left is our sand cat habitat. I'm not quite sure if we do have babies yet, but I think I read something about that. But it could also be that it was in Litchfield Zoo and I'm, uh, yeah, getting things mixed up a little bit in my head. And here we do have the beautiful habitat and really huge habitat for our fennec fox. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how the whole area here is looking right now and I hope you guys will like what I am doing next for our black rhinos. I took some inspiration for building the habitat for the rhinos from the zoo in Augsburg, uh, which is really close to me and uh, I'm often there visiting the zoo. We also do have a baby rhino. Well, it's not that much of a baby anymore, but still I think it's half a year old, so uh, quite like preschool, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, and it is a white rhino and uh, not a black rhino, but the zoo in Augsburg has something like this uh, holding pan for the rhinos where you can separate the animals, but also you can have a look at it when you are visiting the zoo. It is not a backstage holding pan, but uh, it is like a smaller habitat for the animals. They used it often when uh, the little rhino was uh, too small to go out on the main habitat with the adults so that he was separated with his mom in the smaller habitat. And I wanted to have something like this in here as well. Well, it uh, seems it might be not that problematic with the black rhinos because black rhinos are not living in uh, herds like the white rhino does. So uh, black rhinos are more solitary. They only come together for mating season and uh, after that they go separate ways once again. So we don't have a huge herd and we don't need that much space for the animals but still we wanted to have some space for them and make them feel comfortable. Uh, yeah, you know, we don't want anything like we had with the sand cats that we have a beautiful habitat but in the end the animals are not comfortable in it and uh, don't have enough space so I didn't want to have that. So therefore we do have this holding pan that I'm creating right here. Uh, we have something like a dry mold in front of it, uh, so the visitors have a nice look into the habitat and we don't need that huge fencing for the animals. But I also decided I wanted to have this dry mold to be accessible for the animals as well. So what you can see here on the right side is we have something like uh, like a ramp or something where the, uh, where the animals could go down there. This is also something for safety reasons, I think. 
So if you would have an animal uh, that falls down the dry mode, you don't have the problem that it couldn't get up uh, back into the habitat anymore. So it can usually, uh, usually uh, easily access the habitat uh, through the ramp and walk out of the dry mode. This is especially uh, very yeah very very cool if you have baby animals in there because babies are often not that uh, yeah that careful when they jump around in the habitats and uh, even though rhinos are some gentle animals and uh, not that much stressed or stuff like that uh, baby rhinos are quite a handful so if you have ever seen a baby rhino you know that they are very 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 fast and uh, jumping around and uh, doing stuff so it is amazing to see a baby rhino so uh, therefore it would uh, it would come in very handy if you have something like this so if the baby jumps down there it can easily go back up there um, so if we are talking about animals jumping down the dry modes i have something very interesting that i wanted to tell you as you guys know i'm doing real life zoo tours as well and for those real life zoo tours uh, we also visited the zoo in berlin and the zoo in berlin has a habitat where they do have uh, different antelopes uh, giraffes and uh, Garenuk uh, and uh, stuff like that and those habitats are separated with a dry mode so that the animals can't get to each other but they do have one water bug that actually jumps down the dry mode on purpose and uh, just so he can feed on the grass that is growing down there and um, yeah as we visited uh, the zoo we were at that habitat and looking into the habitat uh, enjoying the view of the animals seeing the water bug and suddenly i heard something like uh, yeah it sounded it sounded really awful like like a crash or something and uh, i turned around and then uh, my uh, my husband told me that one of the antelopes uh, fell down into the dry mode. So I was very scared and thought, oh my god, oh my god, I hope it is not hurt. And uh, I saw the animal down there, it seemed healthy. And uh, right at that moment, uh, some of the keepers came, uh, came around with some kind of a golf cart or something like that. And I, uh, I waved towards them and they waved back, so <laughs> first of all they, they thought I was greeting them and uh, yeah, then I told them uh, they should have a look because one of the water bugs jumped down the dry mode and uh, they just waved back and uh, told us that this is very normal, that the animal does that all the time and it can easily jump back into the habitat once it is uh, yeah it had enough of the grass that is growing down there so uh, yeah there's that little story that I wanted to tell you the actual episode of the zoo tour in zoo Berlin is not online uh, yet uh, I have to cut it and uh, work on it before I can release it uh, but it will be online in a few weeks or month I guess because I have so much uh, real-time uh, real-life zoo tours that I already recorded so there's going to be a new tour every three weeks so but back into this you can already see the small habitat uh, the small holding pan for the animals what I'm doing next is uh, building the house for the animals First of all, I was thinking if I wanted to have something like a rhino house that our guests can walk into, but uh, in the end I decided no, we're not going to do that, because I did that last week in the, uh, in the episode in my other sandbox series in Litchfield Zoo, where we also built a habitat for the black rhino, and I decided I didn't want to have something uh, similar to that in uh, Brooksburg Zoo because I always try to make things a little bit different 
so we're not going to have a walkthrough house um, yeah I think which is okay because we already had one in the last few episodes where we built the desert house and I don't want to bore you guys with always building some huge buildings where our guests can uh, walk through and stuff like that so uh, yeah I hope that is okay for you but we're definitely going to have something like a walkthrough building uh, pretty soon once we are going back to the entrance area where we're building our castle which is going to be a huge house for animals and I've still not decided which animals are going to move in there yeah um, I learned some things from uh, building the habitat for the black rhino in Litchfield Zoo the last week and I learned that those rhinos do have a big hitbox uh, I already thought they would have a huge hit, uh, hitbox because yeah rhinos, elephants, uh, giraffes and uh, animals like that uh, usually do have a huge hitbox in this game um, which is not uncommon but I had quite some problems in Litchfield as I was building the house because the animals couldn't walk out of the house so I tried to have some bigger doors or gates in here so that we wouldn't have that problem in here in the end I had to change something uh, off screen I had to move those gates a little bit more to the right and uh, unfortunately through the walls so that the animals could exit the building because they were not able to do so and they also were not able to once they could uh, walk into the holding pen they were not able to walk into their big habitat so I had to change that as well but right now everything works out pretty fine the animals are very comfortable in the habitat I think they are at uh, something like 98 percent or was it 86 so uh, they are they are quite happy with what I built for them Oh, yeah, and uh, this is also going to be uh, a combined habitat. Some of you let me know in the comments that it would be great if we would, uh, if we would have a modern combined habitat for some of the animals in here, as we don't do that often in Brooksburg Zoo. We have just, I think it is just one combined habitat right now that we have, which is for the Binturong and the small cloud otters, but we don't have that for any other animal. So I thought it would be time for this. So what I am doing with this habitat is I'm going to have the Adax antelope, antelope, not antelope, uh, antelope in here and maybe we will also have the Adra Gazelle in here as well. Uh, not quite sure about that, but uh, the Adax is definitely going to move in here. Yeah, uh, having a combined habitat, <clears throat> but uh, not like that the animals would share the same space all the time. Because if you have something like a combined habitat with uh, animals like rhinos, giraffes and uh, several other animals that share the same habitat in nature but won't be comfortable around the other animals all the time, um, you would have something where you can separate the animals or where they can go away from uh, hide from the other animals so what I was doing in here is and you will see the later on I was um, dividing the habitat with some tree trunks uh, and moved them that far away from each other that the antelopes can walk through them so they can easily access the habitat where the black rhinos are but they are too close to each other that the rhinos could walk towards them well baby rhino would be able to 
but the adults won't be able to walk over to the Ardex antelopes. So if they have enough from the rhinos and just want to relax and chill a little bit, they can separate from them. So that is something that I wanted to do in here. Uh, the only down part to this is we are having a beautiful indoor area here for the black rhinos and for the black rhinos only. But once we are doing this stuff where the animals can separate from each other and the uh, Adax antelope can walk into the habitat for the black rhino, yeah, they definitely would be able to go into the uh, indoor section for the rhinos as well which means we are definitely going to see Adex antelope lying down in the stable for the rhinos which I'm not happy about but uh, yeah we can change that might be a little bit different if we would have actually the option with two keeper gates or more than one keeper gate for uh, yeah for actually one habitat so that would change things quite a lot but I don't see that coming in the future for Planet Zoo. Yeah and as we are talking about the future of Planet Zoo there are some speculations because some people are afraid that Planet Zoo is slowly coming to an end. So there's nothing official about that. But uh, thinking about how Frontier in the past uh, handled things with uh, Planet Coaster, for example, when uh, they didn't support the game anymore, there was never an official statement from Frontier, if I'm correct on this, where they told the, uh, the players that uh, the support for Planet Coaster would come to an end. I think it's uh, still, uh, yeah, still to this day there was never an official announcement. So uh, it might be the case that uh, one day Frontier will stop to support Planet Zoo and we will not get any notification about this. Uh, just knowing it when we don't see a DLC coming uh, for the regular times that we actually get DLC, so within a time span of three or four months. Yeah, but uh, others say that there is definitely going to be uh, download content, so DLCs for the rest of this year and maybe also for next year because Planet Zoo is still going pretty strong and have lots of players and is selling very well even after how many years do we have the game now? Three years or is it already four years? Um, it is still going strong and is one of the strongest games from Frontier Development. I I think uh, I heard in some video, I think it was from uh, Leaf, Leaf told it in his video, I think, um, that it is stronger or the sales, was it the sales or um, how many people play the game actually is more than Planet Coaster and... Jurassic World Evolution 2 combined. I think it was like that. So uh, yeah, just to make the point, Planet Zoo is still doing pretty great and it would be... Yeah, it would be not that smart to quit supporting the game, I think. <coughs> Yeah, but back into this one. Um, as you can see, I finished the holding pan at the house for the animals. The next thing is we are going to build the outdoor habitat. So uh, the outdoor habitat for the black rhinos and one part of the outdoor habitat where um, that also our Adex antelope can use later next next week i think um yeah talking about next week i can't can uh, i can't guarantee you guys at this moment that there's going to be a new video next week 
as I'm going to be away from Friday until Monday next weekend, so the whole next weekend and also Friday and Monday, um, you, which are usually the days when I do create new stuff for the video. So most of the times I'm recording on Friday, Saturday and Sunday so that you guys get new stuff in uh, the next week. But as I'm going to be away, uh, I will not be able to do so. So I don't know if I can do that much this weekend because we already do have Sunday. Um, I have tomorrow left, which is um, yeah, Monday because um, I only work four days a week. So I have Mondays off and I use the time to work on uh, Planet Zoo on that days and also my secondary job and uh, yeah who cares um, but I think it's going to be a little bit difficult to provide you guys uh, with a new video next week so uh, if there's not going to be one don't worry about it uh, there's definitely going to be one latest uh, in two weeks uh, where we are going to build for the Adex Antelope uh, yeah, and you guys can also let me know in the comments if we should do the Adra Gazelle as well in that habitat. Uh, <coughs> in that habitat, and also if we should build for the Adra Gazelle in the same video, or if you want a separate video on that animal. And I think after we have those two, no. We do have the dromedary camel uh, that is uh, still left, but I know where I want to put these guys. I think I'm going to put these uh, right to, right next to the uh, entry, yeah, to the entrance of the living desert. So we're going to have those at. Actually, it's the exit. So you're entering the living desert area where the porcupines are and the wild ass and you're going to exit them, uh, this area where the dromedary camel is going to be. So um, yeah, if we are doing the Adex antelope and the Adra gazelle in a one video, there is still two videos coming for the arid animal pack and then we are moving on with the rest of the animals that we have in the game. Yeah, so just let me know in the comment section what you guys think about it, uh, how you guys want me to build for these animals and uh, yeah, I will be happy to do so. What I wanted to have in here as well, I always try to do something uh, special, something unique, so that not every habitat is looking the same. So I wanted to have something like a viewing platform for our guests, which I'm building right here. Something like a gazebo or a pavilion. Is pavilion is that, uh, is that a thing in English? Is that a correct word in English? Um, yeah, I wanted to have something like this in here, so a little area where you can sit or stand in the shade and have a look at the animals. So you can watch uh, the animals on the left side, you can have a look at the rhino habitat and you can also look at the Adex antelope habitat on the right side. Yeah, a little bit like we did for the African penguins that we have in the other area here in Brooksburg. And on the other side we have the sun bears. It's quite similar. Uh, yeah, and here you can see already those tree trunks that I was talking about. Uh, where the Adex antelope can move through. Uh, I hope they can. I didn't try it because we don't have these animals in here right now. Uh, but I think they will be able to. The rhinos definitely are not because uh, as I mentioned before they have a huge hitbox so they will definitely not be able to walk past that.
making sure that the dry mode is steep enough that the animals will not be able to escape through there. And creating a nice viewing area for our guests. Yeah, and then we are going to finish our gazebo. And I think I mentioned it quite a lot, but uh, here you can see once again how I'm building those circle shaped buildings. Um, I'm not doing it like building the complete part. <coughs> Sorry building the complete part and uh, copying and circle it around because it gives weird shapes to the building. I'm doing it one by one so you get nice shapes uh, for this uh, yeah for the circles that you are creating. So that is a better option and uh, it is easier to add things later on. So a little bit of fencing around here as well <clears throat> so that our guests won't be able to jump into the habitat to the animals. some final touches on it and then we are going to build the actual roof for our little pavilion. I always start with this support structures uh, at first and build the actual roof later on because this makes things much easier when you have something to put your actual roof on that with the right angle. Yeah, and I really do like to use those reed roof pieces that we got from the Tropical DLC. I'm not using these pieces uh, that often, but I used it in the last episode in Litchfield for the Rhino House, and I think they match this pl uh, placebo. Yeah, I can't talk. It's it's way too hot outside and also in the inside, uh, so I'm just not able to talk anymore. Uh, yeah, using those reed pieces for the gazebo or uh, our pavilion and uh, it really looks very very nice and I really love those pieces. And here's the thing how I'm doing it. I'm starting with some bigger pieces at the bottom of it and I'm going to get smaller as I'm going up there so when you copy it and circle it around so that gives it a nice shape and is not too much overlapping and uh, giving some weird angles. Yeah, first of all I'm using the 45 degree angle to uh, copy it around, uh, select everything and put it into a building and then circle it around once again and here you can see how neat it looks in the end. 
yeah, I'm quite happy with it. We are going to do some interior for that in the next episode with some uh, benches and stuff like that. Uh, I thought we are going to keep something for the next episode and not doing everything in this episode so that we are just building a habitat for the Alex Antelope in the next one, which might be a little bit boring, so I thought we save that for later. Yeah, here once again building a gate for our rhinos uh, that we actually could close if we needed to separate some of them. <clears throat> yeah, and I think in that case, as we do not have a herd structure for the black rhino like we do have for the white rhinos, uh, the male will be the one that is going to be kept in the holding pen if the female has a baby and needs to be separated from the male. So uh, yeah, poor guy, but would have an easier life if it was for a herd structure for the animals. So he would have had the chance to stay with the herd, but yeah, like rhinos do live solitary, so no chance to have the whole habitat by himself. Yeah, and this is going to be the last part. We are decorating our habitat with some rocks and plants as we usually do. And what I did here as well is I decorated the background because the whole habitat looked a little bit uh, boring and empty and what you can do when you have something like this when you have a huge habitat and you don't have that much plants in it because the animals don't like that much plants or they don't need that much plants or if you are going to build realistic you don't want to have that much plants in here because the animals would eat them and uh, destroy everything you should put plants on the back uh, yeah on the background of your habitat that makes uh, that gives it a whole new look that is um, yeah just like if you if you have a photo or, or if you have a painting and you put a beautiful frame around it the photo might look a little bit boring a little bit plain or uh, the painting and once you put a beautiful frame a well decorated frame around it it looks pretty and uh, this is the same thing when you do something like this and you put some plants around your habitat uh, which gives the whole thing a complete new look and you will see that in uh, in a second i think yeah i also wanted to have some different tree uh, trees in here because i was not too happy with just those uh, here you can see the uh, the trees in the background um, yeah, I was not too happy with only those desert trees that we have uh, or that I used in the other habitats as well. So I decided to have something like an acacia tree in here. The mud bath inside the, the pool for the animals. So that is a little bit hidden and not so prominent and uh, you can't actually see that but the animals will use it. Some toy and food enrichment and after that I think we are almost done. Yeah, just putting down the barriers around everywhere. And after that I think that the animals finally can move in. And I also will remove the invisible barrier in the next episode and extend it a little bit more because as I told you guys when uh, the addicts will move in we have to have one 
habitat. We can't combine two habitats with each other because there's no way that we would have two separate entrances for one habitat. So we have to have one habitat actually where our keepers can go into. So we have to remove those invisible barriers and make it one whole habitat. Yeah, but here we already are. We are at the end of the video. Well, there's still some footage, about five minutes are left. So we're going to have a little tour as we have in every video where we are going to watch what we created in this episode. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. I hope you guys like the habitat that I was building for the Black Rhino. If you did so, don't miss to leave a like. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new episodes on this channel. Uh, there's a lot going to happen in the future and yeah. I hope you tune in next week or if I'm not able to record something for next week in two weeks when we are going to give our black rhinos some new neighbors. So let's enjoy the footage of the animals and have a great time. See you then guys. Bye. Thank you.